This is Dr. Hayek, and this video is about gases. In today's video, I'm going to discuss pressure. But before I start this video, let me introduce you to the outline of this chapter, where I divided it into six different topics. Now, this is going to give me a chance to talk about more details about every topic. So please refer to the corresponding video for the topic of interest. Now, as you know, we all live in an atmosphere full of a mixture of gases that we call air. Now, air is constituted mainly from nitrogen and oxygen in addition to a small amount of several other gases. Now, these other gases, they're like argon or carbon dioxide or many other gases. Gases will exert a pressure on any surface that they come in contact with. So if we consider the example of a balloon filled with air, now the air particles will be exerting a pressure on the wall or the inside wall of the balloon. But at the same time, air will be also exerting pressure on the outside walls of the balloon. Now, since the pressure inside and outside are equal, so the balloon volume will stay constant. Once one of the pressures changes, the volume of the balloon will change. Now, how do we define pressure? The pressure is the force F, which acts on a given area A. Now, consider the following container, which is full of gas. If we zoom in on the wall of the container, we can see that the gas particles are exerting a pressure by applying a force F on a certain area of the container wall. So in this case, we can say that pressure is equal to the force divided by area. Now, since force is measured in Newton and area in meters square, according to the international system, so we can say that the unit of the standard atmospheric pressure, which is Pascal, so one Pascal is equal to one Newton per meter square. Now, using the international system, we can use units such as atmosphere, tor, millimeter Hg, or kilopascal. Now, one atmosphere is equal to 760 tor, which is equal to 760 millimeter Hg and equal to 101.325 kilopascal, or sometimes we can see it as like 100,000 pascals. To measure the pressure, we use devices such as a manometer. So what is a manometer? Is an instrument used to measure the pressure of a gas. We have two types of manometer. We have the open arm manometer, which is open to the outside atmosphere, and the closed arm manometer, which is not open to the outside atmosphere. Now we are going to see in details how we can use these two types of manometer. Let's start first with the open arm manometer, which measures the difference between the atmosphere and the contained gas. Before we fill the manometer with any gas, we can see that the level of the left side arm of the U-shaped tube is lower than the level of the right side arm because the atmospheric pressure is exerting a pressure on the surface of the mercury. Now, if we fill the manometer with a gas with one atmosphere pressure, we can see that the two levels on both sides of the U-shaped tube are the same. So in this case, we can say that the pressure of the gas is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Now, if we fill the manometer with a gas with two atmosphere pressure, so what is going to happen? We can see that the levels are not the same and we, the difference between the two levels is equal to one atmosphere. So the pressure of the gas is equal to the atmospheric pressure, which is one atmosphere, plus an additional atmosphere that's going to come from the difference in the height of the two levels. In this case, it's going to be equal to 760 millimeter Hg. Now let's discuss the closed arm manometer. So in a closed arm manometer, the pressure of the gas is the difference between the level of mercury. So before we fill any gas inside the manometer, we have both levels are equal. Now, if we fill a gas with one atmosphere pressure, we can see that the difference in the two levels is going to be equal to 760 millimeter Hg. So in this case, 
Using a closed arm manometer, we can say that the pressure of the gas is equal to the pressure exerted from the difference in the levels of the mercury, or just simply say pressure of the gas is equal to H. Now, a common example of a closed arm manometer is called the barometer, which is an instrument used to measure the atmospheric pressure. Now, the way it works is that the mercury is pushed up the tube until the pressure due to the mass of the mercury in the column balances the atmospheric pressure. So now the height of the mercury column is going to be equal to the atmospheric pressure and that's why we say that one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeter hg now the reason that mercury is used in a barometer is that it's the heaviest liquid and therefore it gives the shortest height if we were to use water we have to multiply the 760 millimeter by the density of mercury which is 13.6 and therefore the height of the water column will be way higher than rather using mercury now let's discuss a practice example on manometer so given that the air pressure is 95.0 kilopascal Find the total pressure of a gas, which we don't know the pressure of it, if the mercury is 112 millimeter higher on the arm connected to the atmosphere. So as you can see here, we have the atmospheric pressure, and which is equal to 95.0 kilopascal, and we have the height that's equal to 112 millimeter, and what we need to do, we need to calculate the pressure of the gas. So now, how can we calculate the pressure of the gas? The pressure of the gas can be calculated using the following expression, where the pressure of the gas is equal to the atmospheric pressure plus pH. Now, pH is the pressure due to the difference between the levels of mercury in the manometer. Now, the atmospheric pressure is equal to 95.0 kilopascal. Now, the pH can be calculated from the difference of the two levels of mercury, which is 112 millimeter Hg, we multiply it by the term 101.325 kilopascal divided by 760 millimeter Hg. Now, millimeter Hg will cancel out, and the final unit is kilopascal. So the answer will be 14.9 kilopascal. So now that we have pH and we have the atmospheric pressure, so we can say that the pressure of the gas is equal to 95.0 kilopascal plus 14.9 kilopascal, and the answer will be 109.9 kilopascal. I hope this video was helpful to you, so please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.